South Africa is bracing itself for a storm of strike action as metal and engineering unions dig in their heels, demanding better wages and an end to labour breaking. With the country's annual wage negotiation season well underway, it's believed that 320,000 workers in the mining and energy sector will also down tools next. We're going to have a mother of all battles. Zuel and Zima Vavi throwing down the gauntlet, claiming this strike is just the beginning. This year, 2011, we're going to be needing all of your energy. That time has arrived. We want your unity now. The Trade Union Federation is adamant that 2011 is a year of change for better wages, better working conditions and greater benefits. Hundreds of workers took to the streets in Valcom today as thousands of union members remain on indefinite industrial action. According to employers, some companies reported almost total absenteeism from the workplace. Uh, we're ready for when they want to return uh, to the negotiating table. Our demands, we are very clear, are reasonable demands. A number of crucial negotiations are currently underway and the country might be experiencing the calm before the storm. Unions in various sectors are demanding double-digit wage increases way above the inflation rate of 4.2%. There's also a good chance that 320,000 National Union of Mine Workers members will also down tools. Jody Jacobs, E News, Johannesburg. Not all metal workers across the country have heeded the call to strike. Employees at a Cape Town steel factory have decided to cross the picket line. The National Union of Metal Workers say these workers are in the minority. Claims that are strongly refuted by the Cape Chamber of Commerce. Just another day's work for Ricardo Aronsa. He's one of the many workers at this Cape Town factory who has chosen to defy the call to strike. Only one employee at this factory has joined the nationwide protest action. I cannot afford to go off, not even for one day, because all of us have got families to support and losing one day's pay is way too much for anybody to lose at this moment in time and the financial state that this country is in, especially for the workers. Numsa says workers like Orange are in the minority. Uh, about 80% of our members are on strike. We're very happy. And uh, they continue to picket, to demonstrate in their work of place, uh, where they, 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 they work in support of their demands, like it is the case in the rest of the country. The Cape Chamber of Commerce disagrees. It says not even one-fifth of the workers have gone to strike in the province. The Cape Chamber of Commerce and Industry has noticed that in fact we're not as affected as maybe some of the other provinces are. In fact, some of the companies are reporting 2%. Some of them are up to 19%. But we're certainly not affected like we're seeing up in Gauteng. Bargham says the Western Cape's approach to mass action is traditionally different to the rest of the country. People are understanding there's less hysteria. Um, there's probably more understanding of the nature of the business here in Cape Town and they understand that business itself has to be sustainable into the future. Numsa has called on its workers throughout the country to continue striking until their demands are met. Zikona Chona, E! News, Cape Town. Well, more assessment on that uh, story now. You saw him in that uh, report. Uh, Michael Bagram is with us, President of the Cape Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, and thank you very much for joining us. Who suffers more, workers or company owners? Well, it looks like at the moment the workers are going to be suffering more. There is a downturn in the economy anyway, and in essence there isn't enough work. Most of the companies that I've been speaking to as members of the Cape Chamber of Commerce and Industry are already on short time. So, in effect, if you have workers going out on strike, and most of the reports that we're hearing is up to 20% going on strike, and like I said earlier, some of the factories are at 1 or 2%, the workers are the ones who are not getting paid, and people are not understanding that. I think that message has to get out to the workers that there's no work, no pay. And the other problem that you've got 
is that the factory owners are saying, well, we're not going to invest more in production, we're not going to put more capital into the businesses, and if this is going to be the state of play in the future, we're going to look to mechanize. So it's a real problem, and it's, and it's a bigger problem, in fact, for the small businesses who are saying, we just don't need this. We've got problems, we've got a 20% increase in electricity, which is one of the biggest eaters of, of the capital of the company, and now we've got workers saying we want to go out and strike. My understanding is that it's far worse up in the Gauteng area, but in the Cape we're not seeing that at all. Is, is, it, is, it too, is it too early, Mr. Buckram, to say that this strike, uh, and albeit in its early stages, is the type of industrial action that is going to put businesses, uh, um, or put companies out of business? Yeah, no, it's not too early. We, in fact, are seeing that. People are speaking about it. The sentiment from the business owners from the management is that something like this is the last straw that's going to break that camel's back. So it's not too early, it, it's, it's a real problem and I think most South Africans, and we heard from one of the workers earlier uh, in your report, most South Africans understand that the economy is suffering. Most of us believe that if you're going to go on strike you're just going to add that final nail to mm. the coffin and I think it's not good. Yes, Mr. Vavi is calling for the mother of all strike action but I think that's reckless. I also think that it's not conducive to negotiations mm. at all. And we're now having threatening from six other trade unions that they're going to go out mm. and strike as well. Yet, yet having the country and the economy. Yeah, yet, yet, yet having said that, workers themselves are also entitled to a reasonable and fair living wage, are they not? Ab absolutely, and there's no problem with that at so all. So where is, where is the compromise? Offered, well, the compromise will probably be a little bit more than the 7%. But to go and make it three times inflation, that's clearly not sustainable. Um, people will rather bring goods in from outside the country, which goes against everything that our government stands for. Our president has called for the production of five million new jobs. This is leading to retrenchments. People are already going on short time and layoffs, short term layoffs, they're now going to have to look at retrenchments. Mm. So it, it doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't look like Kasatu is thinking with its head. So how do you see this ending then? Uh, again, in the early stages of industrial action like this, uh, uh, numbers are always bandied about. Uh, there, there, are, there are negotiating ploys from both sides. Are, are you sensing uh, a protracted and long strike, the mother of all strikes, as, as the head of Kasatu is pointing out? Or is yeah. there a room for some early resolution here, driven by I, economic I necessity on both sides? Yeah. No, I think there is. I think the workers themselves on the ground, the people who are, have got their shoulders to the wheel, they are understanding that they're not going to get the 13%. Uh, the leadership are screaming and shouting from the rooftops, but the workers understand that, and I do sense that there will be an early resolution. Yes, it probably won't be 7%, and probably be closer to 9%. We're going to see that coming. Um, I don't know what's going through the minds of each and every single worker, but what I've been talking to today and I've been chatting to some of the factory workers. It looks like they are not wanting to stay out too long on strike. And in particular in Cape Town, the guys themselves are saying they're suffering. For every day they lose, they understand they're not going to get that in their paycheck at the end of the week. All right, Michael Bagram, we are, we are going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us from the uh, Cape okay. Chamber of Commerce, uh, live to Newsnight uh, from Cape Town.